You're listening to After No War, broadcasting from the beautiful South Berlin, except no substitute. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, dear listeners. Welcome to the day after what was decisively one of the worst results um, since the last worst result in Millwall's recent history, which um, there have been quite a few, one way and the other. We speak 24 hours on from yesterday's poor result up there at Rotherham. Let's, let's be quite honest. Listeners, let me welcome you to St. Achtung's Day. What's that? You might cry listening to this podcast. St. Achtung's Day dear listeners, is the day that comes each season, I find, a lot in recent years, where I am officially bored of the Millwall season. I'm bored of the mediocrity. I'm bored of the uh, the shambolic way that um, our, our, our club is often managed and run. And today, therefore, is St Akdung's Day. Welcome to St Akdung's Day. I'll have to try and think of some celebratory um, rituals that, that go on today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the voicemail show, one of my favourite shows. We're probably going to have quite a bit of content for you this afternoon, dear listeners. Big thank you to everyone for sending their, their content in to us. Do um, join in, do get in touch with us via X. You can send me um, your voice notes on X, on the Twitter, as it used to be called, by direct message. Just select the sound option and, and speak, basically. Or if you prefer to send me a voice note via good old-fashioned WhatsApp, then um, let's exchange numbers. Message me on on X. You can even email me, to be honest, achtungmillwall at gmail.com. Uh, we'll do a swapsy of numbers. And um, you can join the, the, the gang that, that contribute to these shows. And I really appreciate each and every everyone that does. So on this St. Achtung's Day, um, I'm going to begin a collective... Um, release of pent-up emotion following yesterday's 2-1 loss up there at Rotherham. By far the worst team in our division for some considerable time. We've contrived to um, lose 2-1, a team that's conceded 80 goals. But let's begin our review of those um, proceedings yesterday with Craig Jones. Take it away, Craig. Hello, Nick. Hello, Acton. Uh, I once again return to uh, the councillor's couch have a lie down and think about what happened today and to process my thoughts um, talking hypothetically for a moment like a squash ball to get it warmed up you need to smack it against the wall multiple times really hard so it warms up and gets some bounce and I feel like we were banging our balls against the wall and they were getting hot <laughs> that's when Neil Harris came in and now um, we're just not bothering because we've become complacent and now uh, and now our balls are stone cold and there's no bounce. Anyway, enough of my ball talk. Um, instead of the balls hitting the wall, our heads are banging the wall. Um, oh, bloody hell, what a, what a result. Um, all I can think now is... It's put unnecessary pressure on the team and the squad, and even Harris to extend. In his post-match, he sounded quite hoarse, which makes me think he was um, doing a fair amount of verbal justice towards quite a lot of the lot of the team today. Um, it is undeniable that Huddersfield at home is now a huge six-pointer. Um, looking at the game. Yeah, first half was turgid. Uh, apart from Fleming's chance that was, again, seemed to be the start of very many good saves by the Rotherham keeper. Uh, we just don't seem to seem to put the effort in until we really need to. Um, I've seen a lot of comments about its usual Harris hoofball and relying on set pieces. Late in the day, if that is what will keep us up this season, that is what will keep us up. But in this game, it did fuck all. And now we are looking straight down the barrel. The gun, well, I say the gun, is actually League One. League Gun One? League One. Anyway, you get, you get the idea. Um, I think we won't go down. I think actually Plymouth will take that third spot. Um... Rather than all but down, but really, I can't even pick out a man of the match. And that says a lot about the performance. I 
really hope, talking to guns, I hope Harris gave the team both barrels. Um, and a big shout out to Murray Wallace. That was a horrible, horrible collision between him and Sam Nombe. Um, and he didn't look like he was with it, even if he did try jumping up. And that was more, uh, I think that was him just trying to be more of the, the man and trying to show that it wasn't hurting when clearly um, the lights were on, but no one was home. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's nothing too serious and um, doesn't lead to anything like a concussion. But yeah, that that is one big backward step and um, roll on Saturday because we really do need to pull our fingers out and just get results in the day. I don't care about performances. I don't care about people saying, oh, we can't deal with another year of Harris. Um, who knows? He may well end up walking again. If he feels it's right for the club, he's done it once before, he'll do it again. Um, or call him back to Joe Edwards. No, Joe Edwards, I I was one of these people that was saying, trust in the process. In the end, his head was gone after the Ipswich game. Um, and he's not someone we can revisit. So there needs to be, from the top to bottom in the summer, a humongous rethink about how we play, what our identity will be, and who are the personnel that we'll bring in and that we can afford. And that's down to the recruitment scouting and pushing some of these youngsters that clearly can play football and can put the ball in the back of the net um, and trying to get them through quicker than I would anticipate because, face it, if we're not going to be up, then League One needs to be a lot of blood in the youth in um, if we're in League One. But if we're in the Championship, you know, come on. We, we need the money. We do not want to be in that turgid League One because ugh, that is going to be embarrassing. Anyway. Take care, everyone. Keep the faith. Huge thank you to Craig there. I've written a few notes down as you were speaking there, Craig. I've got Balls to the Wall, which I believe was um, a, a band called Accept, a heavy rock band from, I believe, the 90s or the late 80s called Accept. I don't know why I've written Balls to the Wall down. I think it was your ball metaphors earlier on. Um, were we complacent yesterday, listeners? That's a good good point that Craig's making there. We we certainly showed no urgency in the first half that largely drifted by. There was one shot from Zian Fleming on about 30 minutes or so that the goalkeeper, who was very good, incidentally, I, I, if we do survive, I hope that we've got that man's phone number on speed dial um, because I thought the goalkeeper really kept rather a minute. The, the frustrating thing with yesterday, dear listeners, for me... Was we weren't we weren't good. I mean, let's let's not be honest. Let's be truthful here. Um, we played overall poorly to contrive a, a loss at a place like Rotherham, given their season is is poor. But we did create enough chances, which um, in the second half, particularly a couple in the first half. I think Jake went close in the first half, and there were a few chances in the second. And on another day, maybe one or two of those go in the net, and we were talking about a different outcome. They didn't go in the net yesterday. That's been a thing that's um, that's haunted us for a long while now, that lack of ability to finish. Um, so, given that it was a poor result and slightly contradicting myself there, we did create some, some decent chances at the, during the second half particularly. Um, so, very frustrating to then give away probably both goals. I've not actually had a chance to see either goal back. I'm doing this blind and I haven't had the moment to... Um, look at the uh, YouTube footage today um, but both in real time struck me as situations where the defence slightly went asleep now whether that's complacency thinking that the job has been done that we've got enough of a cushion to um, to see us through to the end of the season um, yeah that is that is complacency whether that is the case or not only Neil Harris will know um, you mentioned Neil Harris there Craig I'm going to play Neil's post-match um, conversation with Mill TV now let's have a listen to his hoarse voice because I think you're probably right that he probably told a few home truths in that dressing room let's have a listen to Neil now just give us your thoughts on that one uh, no, honestly I don't know how we've lost that game you know well I, I do because we weren't ruthless in one box and at the other end we're just too easy to score against I think you know at 60 minutes they've had a shot from 30 yards that Matty saves and their fans are seeing we've had a shot and then you know, the score of the second shot because we don't do the basics of football well enough by getting tight enough to stop stop shots um, and then we get ourselves back in the game and, and we should go on and win the game and, and as the amount of chances we've had um, you know players could be walking off with the match ball today and, and, and we, we haven't been ruthless or clinical enough um, and then to, to concede like we did at the end of the game is you know it's, it's, it's poor from us as a group poor, poor defending but you know really disappointing sometimes it just doesn't go for you 
Now, Neil is, of course, right. Football, being the, the proverbial funny old game, doesn't always go for you. That, that's that's correct. Um, I think Rotherham maybe only had those two shots on target. There might have been one other moment. I haven't got my notes in front of me as I'm speaking to you now, listeners. But, you know, let's be really honest. We should have we should have won that game yesterday. And we did enough, despite not being brilliant, to have won it. And we didn't. Now, this is this this is not a Neil Harris thing. This is This is bedeviled. Millwall Football Club in a number of situations. I'm thinking back even to this season, going to places like QPR and and then last season, anyone that went up to Wigan last year, like I Muggins did here, um, will tell you that we have a, a an endemic problem with big situations. And and as as much as um, as you know, some might not want to hear it. Yes, it was a big situation. We've got Leicester, uh, Huddersfield away next season, uh, next week now, which is going to be a huge match, and then Leicester at home. It's another huge huge match yesterday was highly winnable and a win yesterday would have put salvation if not in our grasp it would have been very very close so to have allowed that to get away from us in such poor circumstances speaks for me volumes for the the basic um footballing now backbone whatever spine whatever way you want to put it choose your own words of this squad because they failed us a few times in big situations over over Gary Rowett, Joe Edwards is, and now yesterday at least uh, under Neil Harris's reign. So there, there are there's a squad there that really does need pruning. Um, like, like we're all going to be doing our gardens soon now that the weather's improving. That's a squad that needs big time pruning for me, and and it might need one or two big names to 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 see the door because. Um, when something so fundamental fails you, you've got to look at some pretty basic points and questions. Um, any anyway, road, there we are. That's that was Neil Harris's post-match thoughts. He's probably sharing what most of us have said, really. One way or the other. Let's have a listen now to. Let's have a listen to Jim Littler. Let's go with Jim next. Hello, Nick. Jim Littler. Uh, not long back after the uh, bank holiday Monday in the glorious Rotherham. Where do we start with that one, mate? I said to the boy on the way up that uh, this could be a potential banana skin today, but I felt with Harris in charge, he'd have him up for it and we'd come away with the result we needed, but fucking hell, what an embarrassment that was today. I think we can safely say you can have anyone in charge of this team and when it comes down to it, there's just no bollocks in it. There's not one of them today that I felt could come out with that with any sense of feeling they've left everything out on the pitch and he's put us right back in it again I was thinking that we were probably one or two wins away from just getting this wretched season out of the way to be honest but here we are again six pointer well probably a 12 pointer on Saturday because if Huddersfield beat us we're fucking really hard back in it but I don't know mate I'm not sure where we go from here I think Harris is Obviously done really well since he's come back with this group of players, but there's so many things wrong with this team. It's unbelievable. I think the highlight of the game really was uh, coming out the ground and the Millwall fans trying to break the cages down. There's been a bit of excitement from the old day, to be honest. Fucking fuming again, mate. Anyway, I just feel Saturday. Let's see how we get on there. Cheers, Nick. ta Cheers, Jim. Well done for going yesterday, mate. Um, and 900 others went up there. Yes, they came over really well on the TV stream, um, really loud. Um, you know, it's, it's a soulless place, rather than at the best of times, isn't it? I went up there a few years ago, and it's um, the, the stadium reminded me of the world's flashiest and biggest sports direct warehouse that's been somehow left in the middle of an industrial wasteland by a group of aliens or something. So, you know, it's not a pleasant pleasant day out, as, as Jim said there. Um Harris, um, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think you touched on the same point that I've just made before um, you started speaking there, Jim. I, I, I do believe there is some fundamental flaws, um, not, not in playing terms, not ability, because obviously championship-level players across all the clubs will have, will, are not going to be Premier League-level players. So we, we, we all, every club in our, our division will start with players that have good, strong points and, and then some flaws that are keeping them at, at this second tier level um but the spine question is the one that you've touched on there jim and i i am agreeing with you i mean as we've said already on this show few of most of our shows in recent times really 
this squad fails us in big moments, in big situations. They've got to look at themselves. They should look at themselves. If they listen to any of these podcasts or any of the others that the boys do around the mill scene, I think most people will be reaching this conclusion that come big time situations, and as Jim said there, yesterday going to Rotherham um, was a big situation because um, we could have really, really put safety champion which is massively important championship safety is worth a huge amount of money to Millwall football club um they could have put it within grasp and they failed us again i don't know what lies at the heart of that they'd have to get on the car the the, the councillor's couch like craig said at the start of today's show um we certainly were not up for it you're right jim and that's that's a major major problem i don't know what neil can do neil harris can do because his management style um, it gets a lot of criticism and many, many people around the scene today on Twitter have criticised his approach and his tactics. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, I don't know. I don't know that you've got a huge amount of variation possible with this, the, the, the palette of the artist at, at Millwall because the, the squad are only so good. I don't, as Harry said, he put it really well yesterday, they're really not very good. So you're working with with um, pony materials, basically, in the end, compared with many other clubs. So I don't know, really know. Um, you might tinker with some of the the tactics, but in the end, with the the, and the injuries that we've got, there's probably limits as to what any manager could do with with this squad. So I, at the moment, I think it's a little bit early to be picking up Neil Harris for yesterday's results. Um, I would be interested to see what happens in the summertime because. As we've said a few times, um, and I, <laughs> I inwardly laugh as I say this, listeners, because you know, for, for various reasons, I, I'm not sure of the quality of the management of the club, and I'm not talking about the first team management. I'm talking about the quality of the administration of our dear little football club um, to set a, a strategic direction and 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 set a manager in place with the um, the cajones to to take on some fairly entrenched players. Because I think we do need to wield an axe this summertime. I know some will be wielded, um, pruned, um, got rid of because their contracts are coming up. Others won't be. But there's a few kind of vested interests, I think, knocking around our club. And that's that's been so for a long time, I know. But that's that's going to be at the root of it, whoever's in, in charge. Um, my own view, Joe Edwards, Neil Harris, Gary Rowett. One manager's as good as another. But if your squad won't play for you or, or let you down like this squad have then it doesn't matter who you are. It could be Jose Marino, it could be Pep Guardiola. If they won't play for him, unless you're going to go out there and take the ball for them, then, um, you know, it's not going to get you very far. Anyway, big thank you, thank you to Jim Littler there. Let's go move along now. Let's do. Let's have Matt Webb up next. Morning, Nick. Matt Webb here. Fuck me. Well, come on. We all know what things like this happen. I refer to the 22nd of April last year, Wigan away. That uh, sticks in my memory. It's, an, it's another case of the Millwall away day atrocities. Let's just put it like that. Now, I'm not going to comment too much on the game because if I'm really honest, mate, I didn't actually watch it. So I, can't com- I won't comment on anything that I didn't see. But I will comment is that yesterday's game was crucial in... The, the season of Millwall Football Club. And, I, and I'll tell you this way. I thought before Easter, I said to myself, well, I was thinking four points and we'll be home. We'll be home. We'll be home. We'll be safe. I could guarantee that because I don't think we'll get sucked into it. And then we've come out of the Easter break with just one, one point. Not good enough. Um, why is it we go to teams like the Rotherham, who, to be fair, had to get a result today. They're fighting for their absolute lives. It was their cup final. And we lose. You know, I saw the stats. They didn't have much on offer, but they put them away. The biggest stat was 2-1 at the end of the day. But now, I, I, I look on, well, I reflect on what Neil says. He said he wants to make then a fortress. Fine, that's fine. But you got to do that away from home, mate. You have to be a, a team that are going to fight away from home just as much as being at home. Because I'm looking now at the remainder of the seasons. And 
we got to go back up to fucking Yorkshire on Saturday against Huddersfield, who again will be exactly like Rotherham, but better, who are going to fight for the other, and it's going to be their cup final. They're going to see that result yesterday and go, fuck me, we can turn Mill over it. Hey, just three points closer to them, three points to get them sucked into it. And then what? We're back to just before Harris came, looking over our shoulders. And then what, after that game, we got Leicester, who, again, have, have wobbled a lot lately. So they brought uh, Leeds and Ipswich into the mix. And they're like, right, well, we need to make ours a cup final as well because we need to beat Millwall. So then what? We've got two teams coming up who have got something to play for at the other end of the table. And then that's going to put us into the shit in my opinion. That's why I mean how important Monday's game was. For, following that, we've got, like I say, they're probably the on-the-beach teams, if we like to put it, except for the, with the exception of Plymouth. Plymouth at the moment, on the, what is it, the 20, uh, 27th, last home game of the season, that could be the, that could, at the moment, could be the game that either keeps us up or sends us down. Unless something changes, unless something in the next few games changes. Unless the players pull their socks up, buck their eyes and ears up and get us over that line. Because I personally thought after the Leeds game, we'll be alright if we play like that. It was a... Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just shit, mate. It just really is. Um, and obviously this is the bipolar in me because... One minute I'm over the moon, and the next thing I'm down in the dumps with Millwall. But that's why I can't stress how much yesterday's result was benefactor. Couldn't give two shits about Rotherham. We should have been all about Millwall. And from the reports I'm hearing, yes, their goalkeeper pulled off great saves X, Y and Z. And yes, they because they were up for it. We need to change that on our side now. We've got to be up for every fucking game to the end of the season and it starts at Huddersfield if the players do not turn up on Saturday with the fuck it let's go for this let's win this let's turn them over let's get safe mentality we're banging it mate players on are playing for their shirt for next season fuck me players are actually playing for a contract for next season do yourself a favour lads Start earning it. So come on, you lines. Yeah, well said. Well said, Matt. Um, just um, looking at some of the points you've made there, mate. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued as to where the motivation goes, listeners. Is it like, does it go down the bath plug hole when you have a wash in the morning or something like that? Because I'm just thinking we've gone from being so good at places like Southampton and uh, at home. Was it, uh, was it Watford we beat at home? I'm losing track now. But we've had some really good, strong early results under Neil Harris. Um, I hope I've got those two games right in my head. Um, he's come in, he's made a splash because we've gone from Joe Edwards with his more, um, what should we call it, his, his, his attempt at trying to create a more artistic style of, of play. That's probably not the right term, but I'm going to go with that. A, a, a more modern passing style, which we don't have the... the um, the, the tools for the job to do. In comes Neil Harris with his bulging kind of um, you know eyeballs uh, approach, Millwall, Millwall, um, Millwallness, and it's probably taken the, the the dressing room at least for a few games by storm. The problem it seems with that cup tie approach is that it, it runs out. It's like trying to keep maintain your, your you know your excitement rates at maximum. You can only do it for so long, and then you have to start to replace it with some form of, of guile and and some plan that does goes beyond plan. You know the kind of direct route as as we've, we've been employing, maybe because we've been having to employ. I think I don't think we've got the plans to really do much else other than how we're trying to play at the moment, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, but the the motivation is 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 it costs nothing. Um, Skill and talent and technique, yes, that costs a lot of money. And as we the, the league table shows, the teams with the most money and therefore the most technique and talent and, and, and all the rest of it are at the top. And the teams that aren't are fighting relegation. Here we are now 
back in it, as, as Matt has said, four points away from Huddersfield in the third spot. A huge game looming on Saturday. Um, do we have the fight for it? Do we really have the belly for it? A good few callers have, have questioned that. I'm questioning it, listeners. I bet you are too, listening to this, wherever you are around the world. But... Um, that's going to be the that's going to be the the uh, the crucial crucial question. I I kind of don't see it. Um, wished I did. Wished I did. Anyway, let's move along. Let's a uh, big thank you there to to Matt Webb. We're going to listen to John Rankin now. I think was up there yesterday at Rotherham. Hi Nick. Uh, hi listeners. John Rankin just calling in with a match report after the uh, very disappointing loss up at the New York Stadium against Rotherham. And, uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, big shout out to the travellers, the, uh, the fans that travelled. Um, I didn't go personally. I watched it on a, on the, uh, TV and I'm glad I didn't travel because that was a tough one. Scrappy first half. Um, didn't really know what to make of it, to be honest with you. Um, I thought we had lots of chances. It speaks volumes that their goalie was their man of the match, I suppose. We had a couple of sitters that we that we missed, um, and you know it was looking like a long drawn out sort of war of attrition really. But we looked pretty comfortable. I fancied us to win it, and then they just scored that goal in the second half with the right back coming in on his left foot, and I couldn't quite believe that he'd gone in. I mean, it was such a such a weak goal really. The goal he was well out of position. And he wasn't closed down out on the out on the flank, and you know it sort of led to chaos. Really, we lost our shape, uh, we lost our game plan. Um, Jake Cooper ended up sort of drifting around up front, and there was gaps at the back. We applied pressure, and we got a scrambled goal in the second half, and then there was another attack down their right side, our left side leading to another goal across in and Tanganga got sort of elbowed to one side. Um, he can't complain that he was pushed even if he was because, you know, he should be standing up to that really. Um, and there it was. Dreadful performance really. And I can't quite put my finger on what was what was missing there. Uh, maybe a bit of tiredness or lack of imagination. I don't think the subs were too well thought through, to be honest with you. And I don't think our shape was that good. Our midfield was a little bit non-existent. Um, we gave them far too much of the ball and all round, it was a pretty uh, ordinary performance, wasn't it, really? To be honest with you, I'll be glad when this season's over. Um, it's been a long, hard haul. There's not been a lot to, uh, not been a lot of joy. There was that little run at Christmas when we, as under Joe Edwards actually, when we got, when we beat Norwich at home and had a little sort of upsurge. That soon fell away. And then obviously the Southampton victory, which we went to, there's been a few highlights, a few things to remember. But generally speaking, it's been a long, hard haul. And I'll be glad to see the back of the uh, 23 24 season, hoping that we stay up in the championship. I think we're 19th now, so if we don't perform against Huddersfield and Leicester, we could be right back in it again. So, who knows? Go, you lad. Sounds like St Achtung's days come to your place too, John. Um, I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. I'm bored stiff of this season, dear listeners. I'm bored stiff of the chopping and changing of the managers, the chopping and changing of... um, you know the, the the players, the the dreary nature of much of what we've had to watch for a long time. It, it it's it's fluttered a little bit, obviously, with the the return of Neil Harris, a bit of drama. Um, but if that goes, <laughs> we've got very little to play with at the den. I was reading one of the press, I think it was a press conference, and I, I, it might have been on the news at Den, I think, but I could be wrong. But um, I think Neil Harris made reference to the mental strength or lack of. Um, that we that we've displayed, and I think we've displayed that many many times over this season, last season, a couple of times in in the past, um, because it's not the first time that we've been embarrassed by lesser opponents without being any in any way disrespectful to Rotherham. I, I know that it's easy to take the piss out of Rotherham and and the fact that it's uh, like much of the north, it's become destitute through lack of industry. I'd love would love to see our country try and turn that around. 
um, recover a bit of pride in these places. I don't come from Rotherham, um, but you know this is this is the heartland of, of England, and we've got to start trying to do something with these places. And so I don't, I'm not knocking Rotherham, but they they approached it as I think others have said um, on as their cup final. Um, and we didn't display any mental strength, listeners. Um, John's just said the the midfield was non-existent. We saw the return of Casper Denor yesterday, and a few people have commented on on the YouTube stream about um, you know they're failing to see what the big fuss is over Casper Denor. I I do think we slightly get a bit giddy and in, in awe. I've caught myself a few times over the years getting a bit giddy in awe of anyone foreign who can pass the ball and, and looks like they've got a bit of um in casper's case a bit of dutch um or flemish dutch um you know spin about them um i think we probably all fall for that a little bit it's the fate of the englishman to be a bit struck by anyone foreign with a fancy kind of turn of of a uh, phrase or um or, or, or a ball um so i also john will be glad when this season is done i i, I do think it's crucially important that we survive whether this squad is capable of survival we're going to find out. Um, tiredness and lack of imagination, I think you said, John. Um, yeah, we did look a bit tired. But then, you know, every team in this division has got the excuse of being a bit tired at the 40-game mark. Rotherham would have that excuse. They've conceded 80 goals, listeners. 80 goals they've conceded all season. I think they've only won prior to us yesterday three times. We've gift-wrapped them their fourth win of the season. Um, minus 50 goal difference. So they're seemingly league one bound, and they look like... Looked like it, but yesterday they 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 take, took their chances, and we gift wrapped them soft goals and defensive errors on hand. Well done to the nine hundred, you mate. I thought you got up there, John. But you watched it on the telly. Good man. That's that's my. I was actually caught myself, listeners, thinking about Sunderland. Can you believe that? I was thinking, shall I about Sunderland? It's a bit of a mirror of a journey, but I think I'm going to watch it on the telly. Any road, there we are. Big thank you, John. John Rankin. Let's have a listen now to to Jamie Mack in Australia. Hello, Nick. Um, happy Easter, and Jamie here from Australia. Just thought we have a really, really quick message just to say, going back to a message I left a few weeks ago about how the crowd would turn with being on the back of those tight decisions as we saw in Rotherham when we get lacklustre displays, as we have seen in Harris in the past, um, instead of these blood and guts performances where the football is pretty dour. And it appears my prediction is coming true. All I can say, though, is we need to get behind Harris. We need to support him until the end of the season. It doesn't matter if we finish by goal difference, just as long as we're still in this division next season. And then, and then, we will see how good our board and our chairman are and how they're going to go forward. And if they select Harris, then probably we'll put us in limbo for another year. Um, I think a wholesale change is needed at the beginning of a season. Anyway, Nick, onwards and upwards. Come on, you lines. Cheers, Jamie. Yeah, happy Easter to all of our Australian listeners over there in the Antipodes. New Zealand, Australia, uh, America, Canada. I sound like the James Brown song, Living in America. Um, yeah, I've got to support Harris. He's the only game in town. Um, a lot of people are calling for stupid things online, you know. Chopping and changing managers. We've we've certainly got nil to the end of the season. It's going to remain to be seen what happens with us if we're relegated. Um, coming back from League One will not be an easy process, and you know Neil has done it with us in the past. I think if we survive or if we re get relegated, he's probably going to be in position come August. So um, the main thing that strikes me is if he is in position that he builds and moulds a squad, axes some of the dead wood that's that's clear to see across the side at the moment Jamie and he's got to start bringing in some players with pace and power to play Neil Harris ball to the maximum and you know let, let's let, let's wait and see what um, what that produces I think he will be in charge come August listeners um, I can't think you know unless he walks out the door which he may do but um, he's got an 18 month contract I think he'll want to at least have a chance to have a crack at championship football if we stay in the league and you know to have a have a shot at the League One promotion if if we get relegated, um, the interesting thing will be what kind of squad can we mould? We do have some really promising youth players. I think one of the callers earlier on mentioned the youth. Um, I was thinking as as that uh, caller, and forgive me, I can't remember who it was. So forgive me, caller. Um, 
the last time that we really put faith in the youth, which is what you read a lot online as the, the kind of Millwall way, the last time we really put faith in the youth and really backed young players would be the Tim Cahill, Neil Harris era, which we was enforced upon us because we were at, in administration and there was no other way to do it other than one or two old sorts that... Um, you know uh, that kept the kept the ship on the on on on, on direction, but we backed um, the Paul Ifills, the Stephen Reeds, the Neil Harrises, and the Tim Cahills, and all the others. So you're talking about 1998, 99, 2000 era, which is 25 years ago plus. So that's the last time we seriously backed the youth. We, it's not in. We we seem to produce a lot of good young players, um, but we don't seem to have the capability or the. Um, the the, uh, the the route map to bring them properly into the side, I think, not on, on any grand scale, maybe individuals, but that was the last time we probably, as a team, backed the youth, so it's a long, long time ago. So anyway, happy Easter, Australia. Big thank you, Jamie Mack. We're going to go over to the uh, switch, switch to another former, former colony. <laughs> Big, t- big thank you, Chicago Joe, out there in uh, what was once um, Her Majesty's... Um, um, North America, but no, no longer, sadly. Joe from Chicago. Fuck that. That was, that was horrible. Uh, proof that Neil Harris cannot be the manager of this team in August. He simply lacks tactics. I, he can get these guys up for certain games, but my word was that pathetic... And the manager's inability to make changes was very concerning. Uh, Brooke Norton Cuff, he needs to be on the pitch a lot more. He, he's probably our most talented player. But, uh, yeah, that was that was horrible. And, of course, we give up two goals after our buddy Shane Ferguson comes on. <sighs> Just awful. I really wish I hadn't watched that. Come on, you Lions. Gotta make it tough for us. Thank you, Joe. Um, controversial stuff. Neil Harris cannot be the manager come August, says says Joe from Chicago. Um, it's going to be interesting once this season finally peters out to whatever conclusion it peters out to, Joe. I, I do agree. Um, changing the game doesn't seem to be Neil's strongest suit, does it? Um, we seem to have one approach that we then kind of keep to come what may. Um Brook Norman Cuffey, yeah, didn't see enough of him yesterday at all in a game. We haven't didn't, didn't seen really anything of, of Adam Mayor. Um, both are attractive winger type players, and at the moment, for whatever reason, um, Neil doesn't see that as as the way forwards for us. Um, there we are. I miss Shane Ferguson coming in. Um, so you know, you could almost. I, I thought he would if he did come in, and I missed it. The fact he did. So well done for spotting that. But I thought he, if he does play for him, he'll score. But um, probably, I think it was the instigator of one of their goals. And the um, there we are. That's that's Millwall Millwall law, so to speak. But uh, big thank you, Joe in Chicago. Let's move along. We've got more content here for you, dear listeners. Um, we're going to move along now to Jim Hackett. Morning, Nick. Jim Hackett here. Um, after a night thinking about yesterday's game, I don't know what to say really. I think um, anybody who's a Millwall supporter for any length of time will understand that the 1st of April, definitely not a great day to have a game of football. And uh, I think our inability to win games like that yesterday were were sort of testament to the sort of club we are, the sort of teams we have since we came up from League One into the Championship, we've never been able to be a, a front foot team that can win games when we're favourites. We're a team that I think will work hard and win enough games against better opposition. And that keeps our, our method, our style and our history going. But whenever we're uh, expected to win games, I think that's our downfall. When you look at our players, we don't have that many that, that could actually do anything different in a game. And our managers definitely don't want to see them uh, start games anyway and, and make any difference. So I think it wasn't a great surprise yesterday that we ended up losing a game. I think the bigger surprise was the way we lost it. And when you watch the game, how little Rotherham had of it and yet still managed to score two goals. And 
Unfortunately for us, we created a lot of chances, which for us is is an unusual thing. But the the, the lack of quality in finishing was was woeful yesterday. I think um, Tanganga had a chance where, from a corner, he was the only one who who was in any space and got the ball. Edith and the keeper made a good save, and then the other one was over Femi, where I know Savile got in his way, but bloody hell, he's a striker. He should be finishing them off. And I think the other chances. You know, on another day, might have gone in, but the keeper had a fantastic day. And, you know, unfortunately, he always seems to have a fantastic day against us. But it's what it is, and uh, that's where we go. I think our bigger problems for me were that we were so um, expecting to win the game and pushing forward so much that, that our our back line got caught. Um, at, well, they got caught because... They couldn't deal with with a couple of attacks that Rotherham did have, and I, and in both cases, I think if you ever watch it back, if anybody's got, got the inclination to watch any of the goals back, then you'll see Tanganga for the first one, is in no man's land in the box, and instead of getting out and closing down the guy who had a shot, he sort of watches what's going on, doesn't move, and then by the time he thinks of moving, the guy's had the shot, and and Sarkic, the goal goes in. Again, I, I didn't look at him close enough to know whether he could have done any more with it or not. It was just such a, a shot that Rotherham took the lead. And then the second one, again, Tanganga is a centre-back. He's really got to come across and uh, deal with that better. I think he got he got fouled by the looks of it. But unfortunately, on a game like that yesterday, we weren't going to get that sort of shout. There's a, there's a sort of roughness to, to what happens to us and, and we seem to always suffer. And again, Sarkic, he, he made an attempt to get the ball, but it, it's one of those days where nothing quite stuck to him and he didn't have that much to do, but what he had to do, again, I can't really say whether it was good or bad. It was just uh, disappointing. As for the rest of the team, I, I can't actually think of anybody who played really badly. I think Casper Dunore took a little bit of time to get in the game, but once he did, I thought he was uh, excellent. Sabal, to me, looked a little bit weary and... Uh, I don't know if that was down to the game before and he just didn't have his legs to start with. But when you looked at the team in the first half, it was so slow and so ponderous. It was like a game of one half yesterday because the first half passed everybody by. I know we could have had a couple of goals, but but for their keeper or but for woeful finishing. But the first half was a non-entity. The second half, we showed a little bit more fire, a little bit more um, wanting to get hold of the ball, a bit more passion. But then after getting ourselves back in with an equaliser and you thought there was only one way the game was going to go from there, to then lose the game to the second goal was a kick in the nuts for everybody, I think. And now we go to to Huddersfield next and possibly might be better for us because I think Huddersfield are a better team than Rotherham and and will come at us because they need the points desperately. So if they're coming at us, it might just give us a, a chance to get something going forward. And sort of going back to what I say about people who didn't, who nobody didn't really play well yesterday. I thought Oberfemi was a passenger yesterday. I couldn't see um, what he gave us at all. Even the pace that he's supposed to have didn't seem to stand out yesterday. And his finishing wasn't there. He, he struggled to stay on his feet. And I, I just think he's not a, a, a lone centre forward. He's a sort of striker who should be in a two. And unfortunately, we haven't got the, the other one to make up the two. So... Well, I think he's going to have to keep ploughing along there and, and hope that we can just get our chances, get Fleming, get Watmore, who seems to be Neil Harris's flavour, get him into positions where he can actually create goals or score goals. But we'll wait to see for Saturday against Huddersfield. Oh, well, and on we go. So come on, you Lions. Big thank you, Jim. Yeah, we had chances of plenty, really, um, in what was a poor performance. Listeners, we've said it a few times already. And as Jim says, the first half we were very, very slow. Clearly a second half performance where the uh, manager, Neil Harris, had given a, a rocket up their collective backsides and we did come out with more pace and we looked um, much more likely to, to get a goal. Um, chance taking has bedeviled us for a long, long time. And I do agree uh, with Jim about Oberfemi. I like him. He's a strong, strong striker. Um, but he does need someone alongside him. He would have worked really well with Steve Morrison in his pomp doing the kind of uh, the Steve Morrison thing with Oberfemi. But uh, he has had a couple of chances recently that he's not taken. That could cost us cost us hard. 
Um, I haven't watched the goals back. Um, normally I do before I take on these shows just to get a sense of what happened, but I just cannot be bothered, listeners. And the reason I can't be bothered is it's St. Achdung's Day today. Um, I'm hoping that I find my mojo in time for the uh, the Leicester game. I can't watch next Saturday's game. We've got a family event next Saturday at Huddersfield, so um, we'll see where we stand after after that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I'll summon up the energy <laughs> for the Leicester uh, home game. I think you're right, Jim. We are not. We're not historically historically. We're not a front foot team. We are historically an underdog side that um, come out of our corner swinging and. Um, Sometimes you get chinned when you when you yeah, that's your fighting style, isn't it? Um, big thank you there, Jim Hackett. Always listen to Jim whenever he comes. I'm going to have a listen now to to um, to Glyn Horner, and then we'll follow that with Matt Richards. Take it away, Glyn, and then Matt. Hi, Nick. Glyn here. Uh, I thought I'd just absorb both games over the weekend before commenting, but um, yeah, I, I, obviously it's not been the greatest of weekends. I mean, not bad to get, I guess, a draw out of the two games, but um, yeah, it was uh, not, not exactly a, an overwhelming weekend of, uh, uh, of football for us. I think one of the points I wanted to make out was that we, we now have a core of about seven players that are um, performing at a sort of seven out of 10 level on a regular basis now. And in, in that I would um, include sort of Tanganga, Leonard, Savile, Mitchell, Honeyman and Fleming. Uh, and because of that, I think that's probably going to get us through these final few games of the season. You know, with, if, if those sort of six or seven players can uh, continue to maintain those performances, I, actually, I should include Sarkic in that as well now. I, I think we, we've probably got enough to get us through the rest of the season and pick up, uh, I don't know, the, the sort of five or six points that we need to, to survive. Certainly looks like the bottom three are, are starting to drop points now, although um, obviously Birmingham have had a, a bit of a result. They, they, they probably will slip down as well. But it, it does, I think, raise the uh, the spectre of next season and what's going to happen. And unfortunately, I think if we wait until the last game of the season before we know exactly what league we're going to be in and um, signing players of any quality and the, and the number of players we're going to need is going to be incredibly difficult. And um, I, I, I do worry that we have the infrastructure in place to... Um, to replace that number of players and integrate them into a squad in a, you know, working together by the time the season kicks off. Uh, and then this goes back to a point I made, I think previously where I, I don't understand our, our scouting and um, recruitment um, set up. And uh, you know, the club doesn't have to give away it's, you know, it's family secrets to sort of tell us more about that. But if you read the book by Mike Calvin, the nowhere men, um, you know, it really talks about how most clubs at our level actually don't have full-time paid staff on scouting. And, um, you know, a lot of them are doing it, they're, they're scouting um, and getting just the bare minimum of expenses and mileage paid. And I, and I do wonder if that's something that we're suffering from. And, you know, maybe that's an area of investment that really needs, uh, you know, some 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 looking at by the, uh, by the senior management of the club. Um I've got to say, I, I think Cooper's levels are, are dropping now. I think Tanganga's now covering for him in a lot of aspects of his game. And Tanganga is, you know, turning out to be a superb player. Uh, I think Danny Mack came on and, you know, filled. I, I think he was unfairly dropped. He made that one mistake, but actually his performances have been good. And when he slotted into centre-back um, at one point, he, he looked actually a very, very good centre-back player. So I... I actually feel that, you know, putting Murray Wallace in ahead of him was a strange decision from Harris. Uh, I don't know why he did that. I don't fully understand and support it. And, um, you know, he came in and looked like a player who hadn't been playing for a few games and, and probably didn't do his um, reputation with Harris huge credit um, yesterday either. But, you know, he, he he will try. And when he's on a runner form, he, he will be a good player for us. Um, I, I think um, what more for me and Obafemi just don't cut the mustard. Um, Obafemi is unfortunately uh, a hard worker, um, a bit like Bradshaw, but you know he, he just doesn't have that clinical sort of finishing um, aspect to his game. What more? You know he's all effort and hustle and bustle, and he you know he puts in a good performance. But like you know in that regard, but when you put him in front of goal, I mean the guys. You know, he's not really got a head on his shoulders for putting the ball in the back of the net. And there was one point at which he had a shot of goal yesterday where Honeyman sat quite clearly in the middle of the of the open goal and, you know, held his head in his hands when Watmore flashed it over the bar. And I think the keeper may have tipped it over. But, yeah, I mean, right now, I think we have every chance of 
defending and drawing our way to safety this season, I don't think we're going to be smashing any teams. Um, I, you know, seeing the score of more than two goals a game, I think is unlikely. Um, you know, getting one goal a game and then locking up at the back is probably the best we can hope for. So that's it. I'm not, I'm not too despondent. I still think we've got enough to get through, but, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really worried about the summer and the transfer window. I don't know how we're going to address that, and I don't quite trust that the club's got the setup to actually do it either. But um, you know, onwards and upwards. Let's uh, hope the game at Huddersfield is a, is a, a very valuable three points because that that could see us over the line, in my opinion. All right, mate. Take care. All the best. Hi, right, Nick. Matt Richards here. Just giving my uh, thoughts on yesterday. Uh, sorry, it's a bit late. I didn't get back to about uh, ten o'clock last night. Um, yeah, look, I see. I see a lot of comments online and stuff like that about how appalling it was and it's disgraceful and stuff like that. And I'm a bit surprised about that kind of reaction. I think I, I get it for for the result because we should be going up there. We shouldn't be losing, and you know they've got an appalling record. And um, yeah, so you know it's only the fourth game they've won this year, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I don't think that's not that's not the worst Millwall performance I've seen in a million years, um, even this season, you know. And um, I think we just need to kind of calm down, calm down in the fact of the performance. I thought I thought the result was terrible, and where we are four points now because of the other results going against us. Um, I get I get the reaction, the initial reaction. And I don't know what it looked like on TV, um, but yeah, at the game yesterday, you know, the first half an hour, that was that was where it was like nothing really happened, and that was the frustrating part. We didn't impose ourselves, but you got to remember they're fighting for their lives, and they. But that's the key thing. They they fought more than we did in the first half an hour, and that's not what you expect from or any mule team, but obviously especially under Harris. Um, but you know, it's not you can't blame. Harris because it's, it's down to the players on the pitch um, but the first half an hour you know that's when we kind of if, we, if we'd imposed ourselves and played it around and made the challenges and you know early you know, it's a cliche early goal and you know it would have been a different kettle of fish on that um, but we didn't but towards the end of the half you know Zeehan's shot and I think Cooper had a header, which he should have scored, you know. And these, these are the these are the key moments. Um, but it's brilliant, say so brilliant save by the keeper from Zion, you know. So you can't, you know, what a game he had. The keeper shows you, you know, what a game he had. That he was man of the match, and that's why I want to come back to about the performance because in the second half we we're just all over them, dominant. You know, how many chances did we have? You know, and how did we not score? It was I can't think of any like howlers that. You think, wow, you know, he's got to score, he's got to score there. Okay, you know, you've got to take those chances, but they weren't like a stupid misses. Um, how many shots we have? I lost count, but that's, you know, we were absolutely all over them and it was a matter of time. So, you know, that's that's what I just want to say when, when you think about the thoughts we've had, when we've had but barely one shot on target, we haven't had one shot on target in games. You know, that wasn't the case yesterday. And it wasn't the case on Friday either. We're creating chances. Um, so just performance-wise, it wasn't the worst performance. OK, poor defending. But I've, I've, look, I've looked back at the goals and, yeah, it could have done better. You know, we're pushing forward for the first one. That's that's the concern. But we're pushing forward. So you kind of think, well, at least we're going for it. We weren't sitting back um, content to get a nil-nil. Um and then content to get a one-one as well. So you could say it's poor game man, game management. Um, but what what do people want? People say they want excitement, and then the team's pushing forward trying to score goals, and then they let a goal in, and it's like oh shit, game management. And it's like, you know, I think you've got to cut the team a bit of slack there. Um, it's getting to to lose, and I I thought from in I'm hundred yards down the other side of the pitch, I thought it was a push on Tanganga. I was sure the referee. I didn't even get like too pissed off when it went in. I thought, oh well, it's going to blow up, and he didn't blow up. But um, yeah, so it's 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 just it's just really obviously. I think it's it's the frustration everyone's got when I get that, you know, because we you know we were just a couple of points away from safety. Now we've been dragged back into it. We've got a huge six pointer Saturday, and we've got Leicester who Leicester are fighting for you know obviously. 
the promised land at the other end of the table, so they're going to be up for it. Two really tough games. Um, it'd just be like Millwall, don't we end up get, get six points for them, don't we? And then we're everyone's wondering what we're worrying about. That's a typical Millwall. Um, but I think we've got to take today's performance, at least a half an hour anyway, before half time and uh, into the second half forward and think, well, this is how we can play. We can create chances. We will score chances. You know, we've got nobody else on the bench is going to have a better chance of scoring scoring chances. You know, there's nobody on the bench. Um, so we've got to stick with them. And, um, and I think there will be a reaction. You know, Neil Harris won't be happy with that result. You know, we all know how passionate he is. And I don't think the players will be happy with that result either. No one will be. So it's it's a big it's almost it's almost a, a good a good result to have before you have such an important game if that makes sense. Obviously Huddersfield are gonna be up for it as well. Um it's gonna be a fight and this is when we've really got a battle, we've really got to show, you know, the Millwallness. I mean yesterday was a Millwallness performance, wasn't it? Or result rather. That is we've got our Millwall back. Uh, yeah. It never went away. It's always there. Um yeah, anyway, that's it, Nick. Um, let's let's, let's uh, be positive and um, come on your lines. All right, big thank you, Matt. And before uh, Matt to, to Glenn, I do like that line about we've got our meal all back, Matt. That's that's very good. I like that because, yes, we do have that. <laughs> our meal all back with performances like that at, uh, at Rotherham, don't we? Um, interesting points, both, actually. I've picked a few out here. The, the, the social media thing's an interesting one, Matt. And I kind of... Um, agree. I mean, I'm avid user of social media doing this, you know, acting with what I try and combine a bit of humour with a bit of um, biting social satire and comment on our dear little club. But it's, I'm not sure in general, I don't know if you'd agree with this, dear listeners, um, I'm not sure it's done the world any good, really, social media. It kind of um, turns every question, whether it be politics, sports, or the football in, in our particular case, but you know, you name the subject. It turns it into a kind of um, everything's a battle and everything's a war, and not every question has a black and white answer. And if we're talking about Millwall, because that's the point and purpose of our podcast here, um, I think you're right about calming down, Matt. Um, you know, we still have two, uh, six games to go, six games to go this season. Um, the result was very disappointing, and in real time, I thought Tanganga had been pushed for that second goal, a crucial winner as it turned out to be for Rotherham. And the referee, I thought, was poor anyway. But how many times have we said that, dear listeners? Um, Social media promotes extreme reactions. People click and look at anyone, whatever your your viewpoint, where you're starting from, whatever direction in life, politics, sports, whatever you want, it favours the outrage. And um, I don't think it's been terribly good for us all to be truthful. Um, but well done for going there, Matt. Um, before Matt, we listened to Glyn, and interesting post actually from, from Glyn there, talking about scouting. Now, that's a really interesting question, Glyn, um, and the need to for a club like ours, as we've seen with others that have achieved high standing, talking about Luton, we're talking about even to some level Brentford and, and uh, Bournemouth, all of whom are... I've got some money behind them. I, I do accept in Brentford and um, Bournemouth's case, I've had a few bob put into them but anyway the, you know these are clubs that have historically inhabited the third and fourth divisions the leagues one and two in modern money um and yet there they are up at the top now the the, the method of of getting to that point is to find talent and um buy it cheap and sell it dear isn't it i don't think there's any great um secret to it in that in that sense there is a great secret in the, in the sense of executing that um, scouting's crucial, Glenn. Absolutely crucial. Developing the young players we have and, and producing them to a point where we can sell them for hopefully a substantial profit is going to be where long term the future of our, our club lies. Do we have the management infrastructure to achieve that? I don't know. We, we are a club that struggles with some pretty basic, simple things sometimes on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, finding talent to run a company. Uh, you know, most of the listeners that listen to this show will be working in the world of uh, business or, or whatever you like. But f- so finding, you don't need me to tell you that finding decent quality management and staff is 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 gold dust, and much easier said than actually done. Do we have the infrastructure and the talent to to find um, 
players for that kind of um, development of our club? Don't know. What do you think, listeners? Do you see the evidence of it? There we are. Big thank you to to Glyn and Matt for their for their two um, posts there. I appreciate them both. We're going to play out now. We're going to play out with uh, Lawrence Binney. And the last time Lawrence came on this show, he started talking about the Bourbon Restoration and French post French Revolutionary Society. I've knocked all that on the head, Lawrence. Not enough of that. This is not the show for that, mate. I do enjoy it though. It is the show for it, really. So we're going to listen to Lawrence. Then we're going to go with Adam Wicks, and then we're going to finally play out with the cult figure that is Mr. Bobby T. You've been waiting all show for Bobby's um, post. It's going to come at the end of the next one, two, three posts. So first Lawrence, then Adam, and then finally Bobby T. I want to say thank you to you listeners for tuning into this voicemail show. I love doing these voicemail shows. You might be able to tell by the vim and bounce in my voice. I do enjoy them. Keep them coming. I can't watch next Saturday's games. I'm tied up with a family event, but I will be trying to do some kind of review show on the Sunday. So I need you, listeners, I need you to send me your voice notes next week, particularly Huddersfield, because um, you know I'm going to be doing my best to produce something that uh, is, is for your listening enjoyment, your aural enjoyment. So send me your your, your post match reviews after next Saturday, Huddersfield next Saturday's crucial crucial game. Anyway, let's play it out now. Lawrence, Adam, and then Bobby. Thank you for listening, dear listeners. Until the next edition of Actung Millwall, from me and St Actung, it's uh, Arriva Dirty Millwall. Bye for now. Hi, Nick. Lawrence Binney calling after Rotherham 2, Millwall 1. Um, very disappointing result. Um, I think there, are, there there's a certain uh, line, I think, at the moment, going around the, the forums and on Twitter, that uh, we should have won that by 4 or 5. And I think certainly we created enough chances to win by 4 or 5. Um but what I will say is that this is possibly the worst championship team in history um, that's been losing four or five nil for weeks. Um, they are going to concede chances. Um, I think a good performance would have been one that had a measure of control uh, and composure. And we we really did lack that um, today. Uh, there was a lot of kind of chaotic football, a lot of throwing balls into the box, um, which I think is fine. Uh, but we also didn't really, we never really kind of took control in the way that I think we should have done. Um, always felt that we were a bit vulnerable on the break. We're not used to taking in the initiative and, and, and kind of pinning sides back. And it, it showed today, we looked very uncomfortable Um uh, whenever we didn't have the ball um, and it would often take us a little while to win it back and get a move going again. Um, so yeah, yeah, created loads from pinging balls into the box. Um, but yeah, it's, that, it's the quality in certain areas, isn't it? I mean, the likes of Fleming um, and Oberfemi, I think today really have to, really have to kind of like bear some responsibility, I think, um, because they are their specialism is in the final third, whether it be that sort of that finish or that final pass. And aside from the Fleming shot, which was, to be fair, was a fantastic shot, well saved by Johansson in the first half. Just, you know, we just didn't really, we just didn't look sharp enough, I didn't think. Um, it was all very desperate. Um, and this is my fear about Neil Harris football, um, that I think we do well on the back foot. Um, and when we're up against it, um, but whenever we have to take the initiative, it's it's yeah, it's 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 desperate, isn't it? It's not um, it's not high on high on quality at all. Um, and you'll say, oh well, you know, we haven't got the players, but I mean, we've got fucking far better players than Rotherham. You know, if that was a if that was a League One fixture, um, then I think you'd you'd expect us to play with a, a higher degree of quality than than we showed today. Um, especially in those sort of key areas. So, yeah, a disappointing result. Maybe one that makes uh, the end of the season slightly more interesting because uh, especially if we lose against Huddersfield, we are we are slap bang back in it. Um, my one fear now is that we uh, our confidence suffers. Um, you know, another kind of pressure cooker game against Huddersfield at the weekend. Lose that and we could, uh, we could really 
could really sort of spiral in, into some bad form at just the wrong time. So we'll see how it goes. Um, should have won, but not a good performance for me. No. Cheers, Nick. Bye. Hello, Nick. Um, it's just Adam Wicks here, leaving my thoughts after um, the 2 1 defeats at Rotherham. Um, I normally hold fire a little bit before sending anything in um, because sometimes I need to calm down or um, just to sort of arrange my thoughts correctly in my head. But I don't think today's one of those days, to be fair. Um, that was pretty, pretty awful. I think what, what we've, what we've all just seen. Um, yeah, um, I think you only have to look at the table. We've lost to a team with a, a nearly minus fifty goal difference. That before today had only won three games all season. And I know it's predictable as clockwork that whenever we mm. tend to play teams like this, we tend to do this sort of thing. But there's got to be some questions asked about why why this continually happens because it it just smacks of total unprofessionalism um we seem to play up or down to the level of the team we're playing i mean we look great against west brom um i thought but and but today i thought we looked every part of bottom three sides we 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 just weren't we joined up we did, just we just don't look, have a clue going forward i don't think um it's really disappointing, um, and now we've put ourselves right back, right back in the mix again. We, we could have been almost home and hosed today if we, if we'd won. Which the game was there to be won. We had the chances to win. We didn't even try that hard, and we had to change the chances to win. I mean, imagine what we could have done if we'd actually applied ourselves professionally. Um, yeah, really, really bad. I mean, there's, there's players in that team that might think they can. They can do better than us, but I think they're probably exactly where they should be, looking at the majority of them. Um, it's a real shame. Um, you know, we've got a massive game at Huddersfield now. I mean, God only knows what happens if we don't at least stop them beating us. Um, yeah, bit of a roller coaster, this, isn't it? I, I thought we were going to be comfortable, but, you know. Um, to a degree, but now I think it's going to be squeaky bums, isn't it? I think. Um, God, um, how Tanganga missed that header um, before they scored the first goal. God only knows. He had half the goal to aim at, and he still managed to find the keeper. Um, just some absolutely brain dead, brain dead football. Um, yeah. I, I, um, I don't know, we've got to find some balls from somewhere. Cause, yeah, quick. Um, um, and the worrying thing for me is we're playing exactly the sort of teams we probably don't want to be playing. Um, because, again, we'll have to get, we'll go to Huddersfield. We'll, we won't have any, enough to break them down as such or be creative, but, and they'll get a bit of confidence. And I can just see things going tits up from here. Um, culminating in a, a real few nervy games towards the end of the season. That that Plymouth game could be massive. Looking at it now, um, the way they're dropping like a stone as well. Um, really, really. Ang- I mean, I'm, I'm really angry having watched that. Um, really angry and I'm really disappointed in the the application. I said to to my kids in the first half, it looks like we're being out for here, and they've really got nothing to play for. Um, but they, you know, they fought harder. I thought than we, we were fighting first half. Second half, we got hold of things, created a few decent opportunities, but nothing. You know, we weren't exactly incisive. Um, let in a terrible goal. Um, Harris makes some changes. We score from one of our many scrambled corners. And then just letting another equally awful. I mean, the the defending for both those goals is a popping really appalling. Um, anyway, um, that's enough rambling from me. I think. Um, uh, yeah. So on to on to Huddersfield and God, we need to find a performance from somewhere. The players need to find some spine 
um, and really need to dig in and I don't want to say it, but find some uh, find some of the dreaded Millwallness. Um, anyway, come on, you lions. Bobby T here. Absolutely dog shit, embarrassing, shocking, useless, fucking Millwall cunts, right? Yeah, bipolar Millwall, Nick. I don't care what you say. We are in the dog shit now. Bottom of the club, Rotherham. Couldn't even beat them. We are fucked now. No fight. Fuck, he lost 2 1. I am hurt. Fuming. Bobby T out. Nick Hart. Bobby T here again. How the fuck has this happened? Denor coming out back in the side of Billy Mitchell. Careful what you wish for, mate. Because Billy Mitchell runs around like a, like a dog on heat. Rotherham. I'm just absolutely shocked here and flabbergasted that we've lost to the bottom side of the league. Bipolar Millwall, it's the same old shit now. Now Huddersfield next week, they win. Leicester are not going to get anything. We're going to be in the bottom three with the last four games to go. Only ourselves to blame, man. I don't care. We can't buy a striker. Should have beat West Brom last week. Rather than we all knew we never played good against the, the, the bottom sides. Same old Millwall. I'm really done now, Nick T. I'm fucking fuming. What else can we say? It's not Harris's fault. He picked the team. He got. Oh my God. Bye for now. One more, Nick T. Is it April Fool's Day? Am I in a fucking dream? We've lost to Rotherham. Fucking hell, mate. Gutted. Afton. No one.